What's up, Joe 200? How are you? Hey, it is uh, Monday, October 16th, 2023, and we are entering week nine of this amazing semester. Um, and uh, yeah, so we're going to go get into uh, the more economic and business side of, of things. So the whole last class, part of the class, uh, is applied in terms of uh, the bottom line, okay? And uh, and the whole first part of class was very, very applied because it's it, it, we discussed a lot of issues that are very relevant to you. You, um, you know, have lots and lots of uh, older family members, and uh, and you know, I'm sure a lot of them have had uh, um, disease that you've had to contend with. Um, we talked about the caregiving and all that. So, um, yeah, yeah. So this is all very, very relevant, and. Um, so uh, uh, just, you know, the heads up, okay, so um, uh, as uh, Julia had emailed out, okay, so uh, the midterm is due by um, next Sunday, October 22nd. It's open all week long, okay. Uh, do remember that um, it's open book, open world, okay, and, um, but, you know, once you start to the exam, um, you have two hours to get it done. And the, the questions are from the same pool of questions that we've used for the prior eight weeks um, in terms of um, um, quiz sections, okay? All right, so, and you're gonna do just fine. Just remember that, okay? So how do you get access to the midterm, okay? Um, we come right over here, we have two midterms, okay? So this is the first one right here, due Sunday, October 22nd. Click on it, you go in and you go, okay? Um, each step of the way, my recommendation <clears throat> is save your answer. So you'll see when you take the exam over on the right-hand side, it says save answer, save answer, save answer. So save each answer all along the way, and then at the very end, don't forget to hit submit, okay? Awesome. Let's see if I, I, if I go in here right here. I'll click on this, all right? So you click right there, all right? It takes you in, okay? You hit begin. All right, you scroll down, okay, so here it is, okay, so I'm just going to randomly choose an answer, okay, I'm, uh, I'm not going to say that this is right, but if I choose that, okay, it is saved, okay, so you just make sure it's saved, okay, so we have the automatic save on, okay, um, so right here, that's not saved, so I'm going to hit save answer, done, okay, scroll down here, okay, um, I would, I could choose this answer right here, okay, guess what, I'm saving answer. That way, God forbid, if something goes wrong with your pewter, okay, um, these answers will be saved into the system. All right? Does that make sense, guys? Very cool. Awesome. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get out of here. It's going to ask me if I want to leave the page. Yes, I do. You guys, once you're in, you're in. Okay? Awesome. Very cool. Let's go back to the announcement page. Okay? And let's, uh, let's jump right into this week's uh, uh, assignment. Okay? All right. We'll scroll down here. Okay? And, okay, so we're looking at the economic and social implications of aging society, okay? Now, a lot of this may seem, um, God, have, have um, lower reason to hone in and focus on this based on where the world is at, okay? Um, you know, it, it's a very chaotic time in the world. Um, there, there are um, a lot of um, political aggressions and, and discord all around the world. Okay, um, in in the, in Africa, there are multiple countries that are having um, um, surgencies where where victims are you know people that are just like you and me. We're just trying to go to the store and get stuff done, and they're they're you know being killed and being injured. You know we know what's going on in the Middle East. Okay. And, uh, and and again, you know, you know, 99.999% of us we're, we're not military. You know, we're just trying to be the the best drama major we can be, or the best um, uh, biology major we can be, and hopefully become a doctor someday. You know, um, you know, there's, you know, it, it's kind of flying under the radar, but there is um, quite a bit of of uh, uh, um, Political discord in Azerbaijan right now, with quite a bit of uh, problems for the Armenian population right there that lives in Azerbaijan, their home country. So, so it's worldwide, and um, um, I'm going to tell you guys exactly what I told all of my upper division pre-med students, and that you really don't have much control over these things, even though you're emotional and it affects you. 
But what you do have control over is you can be the best person you can be in terms of who you, you know, who you are. For my pre-meds, I told them you need to be the best pre-med you can be and hopefully become the best doctor you can be, okay? Same drill for all of you. If you're on the football team, you know, you, um, you lick your wounds and uh, you come out and you become the best athlete you can be. That's all you can do in life. You just keep making comeback after comeback, okay? Um, certainly, I was disappointed by um, by uh, what happened uh, against Notre Dame. But just think how how the players and the coaches and, and the athletic department how they feel. You know, it's not like they didn't prepare. You know, and sometimes this stuff happens. Right here, you see, I'm wearing my my Saints shirt. There we go. Okay, um, Julius from from New Orleans. We're pretty disappointed there too. Okay, so just remember that you know, as a spectator, it you know, it's sport. Okay. Um, but the other people put a lot of effort into it. All right, so here we go. All right, so let's get into the economic and social implications of an aging society, okay? Again, well, as always, this video is gonna go right here. As always, I recommend you come down here and you open the quiz, twice. you open the browser twice, open it up in a separate browser, okay? Awesome. Um, this is a you know a pretty straightforward uh, um, uh, review in a sense because we went over all these issues in week one, week two, and week three about the global implications of age, of aging, and we started to doubt you know in, it set you up in those first three uh, chapters. Of course, the third the third week assignment was about issues relevant to the United States, the Pew Foundation. Okay, so. Um, this article is short. It gives you a framework of how to to think about the economic consequences. And again, this is a this is a review for all of us because we've already gone over some of these uh, significant issues. And then we're going to look at a couple of um, individual e examples of economic and economic preparation and and what can happen when when you do things right or when you slip through the cracks. And so, um, yeah, it's very, very, very difficult uh, time for, for a lot of Americans. All right, so we come right in here. All righty, and there's a PDF file that we're gonna be looking at here. All right, so me, I like to use the, uh, the arrow so I can get the tab on the side here. All right, so again, so we're looking at, you know, the, the big global challenges, okay? Um, and again, the, the concept of by 2050, okay, um, you know, 2 billion people over the age of 60, okay? And 2 billion under the age of 15, okay? Uh, so those are the people um, uh, that are dependent on you to bring in income, all right? So those, that's the dependency ratio we talked about, all right? This shows you the transition. Uh, these are, this is the way a lot of people that study populations um, and they look at the age structure. These are called population pyramids and um, we see down here on the very bottom scale, there it is, in millions, okay? So we're looking at, you know, um, 100 million, 200 million, 300 million, and then we're looking at, um, um, you know, each age group, okay? So we saw, you know, 2010, okay? This is, you know, back uh, when you guys were little kids, okay? Um, that you were part of this population right here. So there was, you know, this, this, this glut in the younger population, okay? Um, the age structure has is transforming all the time based on all the issues we talked about, reduced fertility, people living longer, okay? And um, so we can see up here the, the oldest old, okay? So this is 95, 79, all these guys up here uh, in terms of millions. And then we scroll down here and we can see the transformation that happens. You can see how this, this bulge is moving up the population, see? And, I, and yes, we still have a lot of young people, but on a percentile basis, you can see that there are a lot more people that are up in this older, higher risk age group, okay? So what are the drivers of this? We've already gone over this. So, um, so we're seeing, um, yes, world population continues to grow, okay? But on a percentile basis, you know, people are having less kids and we've seen this um, you know, that um, um, there are fewer children are being born on a percentile basis, you know, especially as a function of whether or not you're in a developed country, okay? In developing countries, okay, the economy drives having more children, okay? A lot more hands out there um, in manufacturing plants, a lot more hands out there um, in, in the fields for more rural farming communities, okay? And then things happen, okay? Um, so when we look at 
you know, some of the issues of why the fertility has, 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 has dropped. Again, it's driven by the economic technology of the country, you know, and uh, it takes you guys a lot longer to become relevant, it takes you guys a lot longer to be competitive uh, through education and developing a skill set that will then get you a reasonable job, okay? And so, um, so we see this, that um, it, it's this concept of affluence, okay? and autonomy, okay? And, you know, I did the same drill. You know, I took, we took a long time to have kids, okay? And um, it was because, you know, I wanted to make a better life for myself. You know, it was, it, was, it was selfish, okay? It was mercenary, but we were able to make that choice because we had birth control, okay? Alrighty, so, um, and we look at, you know, uh, again, developed countries, okay? Um, and it's just what they call this low fertility trap, okay? And we're seeing um, fewer mothers because mothers are moving in the workplace, making decision to have fewer births. Okay, and um, then that has you know consequences of uh, future generations. You combine that now, fewer kids with um, uh, innovation in terms of nutrition, um, sanitation, hygiene, and medicine. Well, people people live longer, and so you see again the falling mortality that we've talked about. People, you know the. You know, other than a few blips like um, the, the strangeness of the COVID vaccine that um, it was uh, aggressive and uh, attacked people that were vulnerable because of age. Other than that, you know, uh, the life expectancy goes up and up and up, okay? And because of innovation, you know, we have the blip of the opioid epidemic, you know? Um, but that being said, you know, uh, the balance is going towards having fewer young people and more old people, all right? And we're all in agreement with that. So, you know, so what are the implications right here? So the big one here is uh, labor markets, okay? So uh, if you're not having kids, then you can't find workers to get the jobs done, okay? And so, and as, as, as we go through this, um, uh, there's, there's, there's discussion as solutions. Solution is to create a better environment for, for young workers to, to uh, take time off, to still be competitive in the workplace and have children, okay? So that's, you know, it's one of those things that, that um, you know, how do you retain good workers, okay? Well, you have a, a, a more family-friendly policy, okay? Um, the other thing is uh, we're going to ask our, our people that are older to work longer. And so that's, you know, coming down the pike. You know, we, we keep pushing back the retirement age for getting your maximum amount of Social Security benefit. Okay. All righty. So, so this is a big deal. All righty. Um, so uh, well, as people live longer, okay, we have, comp we have concerns about the, the ability of nations to finance this. Okay. Um, Long-term care provisions, okay, so this is Medicare, this is Social Security, okay, these entitlement programs, and we saw earlier that, you know, certain countries, um, they just, you know, raise the taxation rate to make sure that people have, um, that the, the government is able to finance these care provisions, okay, so it's a big deal. Big, big deal, okay? Um, so what happens then is uh, we have increased longevity right here. Uh, we have these these burdens that we just talked about, okay? And if you guys, as you know, the workers are having to pay for this, then um, there becomes this question, is, is this really fair? You know, why am I having to finance uh, a better life for these people, okay? All righty, so this is, you know, the one graph, that, um, one figure that's in here besides the other figure that we looked at that looks globally. And, and, and this is looking again at fertility rates. And you can see this concept of develop versus on, uh, um, uh, developing countries. And, uh, and you can see that, you know, the, the movement is globally, you know, um, uh, for a reduced fertility rate. It's just, you know, it is, it's taking time. This is from 2005 to 2010, okay? This paper was written in um, 2018. All right, cool. All right, so, you know, that we have these big economic effects okay um and that's that's the big issue so we see a decline in the proportion of younger people okay and this is perceived as a potential reduction in economic activity okay um you need good minds you need good hands to get things done all right and um so we have reduced economic activity okay this increase in older people like i said okay um results in an economic burden okay 
it is what it is, okay? My, not only my Social Security and my uh, my Medicare, but hey, look what's gone down with you know your two instructors this year, all right? So um, so uh, Julia's in the throes at the age of 60 of significant um, cancer treatment, okay? And um, we have health insurance, but the insurance is having to pay for her treatment of you know, close to a couple hundred grand this year. Okay. So, um, so that's an issue. I had shoulder surgery, you know, so I cost, um, um, the insurance company, you know, about 60 grand this year, you know? And so, you know, and so money going out, money's got to come in. So we, we, we do become this burden. Okay. And before you know it, okay. Um, I'm going to be, uh, looking at tapping into my social security pension is a different thing. Okay. But even then, you know, what's what's going to happen is I, you know, while I have not a pension, uh, pension is a guaranteed income that government workers get, for example, and we're going to go over that. But I do have the money that I put away in my 401k. Um, and uh, and so the banks that have my money are able to use that money. OK, for investment and for growth. OK, so so there, you know, so so there there is this benefit to them. OK. Um, that comes from me, you know, putting my money in Fidelity or Vanguard or whatever these uh, financial institutions are. But guess what? You know, when I retire, then I start pulling that money out. OK, so that becomes kind of a burden. All right. Um, we also have, like I said, the health care issue. OK, uh, it only goes up um, as you get older. All right. So. So, yeah, so these are these are big, big deals. OK. And um, so. Um, this is this group, um, just like we have, you know, um, uh, you know, the, the different agencies of countries that get together, you know, so our president of the United States will sit down and have a summit with groups of different countries. This is one of them. This is the Organization of Economic Cooperation Development, OECD. OK, and um, and this is going over what we've talked about forever. OK, this demographic shift. OK. All right. So fewer workers more people pulling money out of the economy, all right? So it's pretty straightforward. So how do you address this, okay? So we gotta improve fertility, okay, right there. And uh, we have to um, open our doors for immigration, okay? So it is what it is. I know that's a big political hot, hot point, you know, but you, you, we have to figure out the way to do this in a smart way to keep our economy growing, all right? So these are steps to take to increase the opportunity for having kids, okay? So we, we need to have better support and policy maybe so that uh, it's easier for you guys to, to, to maintain your employment while having children. And there are some laws put into place that help that way, okay? Um, the other thing is, uh, remember the dependency ratio? We showed that earlier, the concept of, of children and older people, okay? They're not contributing to the economy. They're pulling from the economy, okay? Um, they're spending while the people in the middle, say 20 to 60 years of age, are producing, okay? So um, so the solution is people need to work longer, okay? And uh, that's what's being encouraged by, our, by governments all around the world. Remember France flipped out this year when they announced that they were going to change the age at which uh, people were going to be getting their government-based entitlement programs, their version of Social Security, okay? So, you know, it's a big deal, okay? And um, so they go over this again, uh, the concept of the of the negative draw, all right? So subtracting from the gross domestic product of the country um, is the ill health and disability. And so we can change that. That's a target. And so um, all you need to do, I know you guys don't watch a lot of TV, but if you watch TV, um, all of the different um, large health corporations have these healthy living programs where they're trying to encourage people to live a healthier life. So that means they'll have less disability and less cost. Okay. And so if we, if we can get people to turn their lives around, eat less McDonald's, eat more broccoli, you know, or at least the Mediterranean diet, then, then it's going to be a lot better off. And that's what that, that's all about right there. Um, we got to reduce healthcare costs. Okay. That's a, you know, it is a huge, huge drain. Medicare, um, you know, the, we have these, these banks of money called trusts, but because there's so many, and it's a government, um, 
holding of all of our funds and when we look at our, our paycheck we have social security tax and medicare tax okay it goes into there okay um but um these trusts are going to run out of money and um as healthcare costs rise it's going to happen a lot more quickly and the only solution for that is to increase the taxes okay um or get people to be healthier so they're not drawing money out of the that insurance program right so that's what that's all about right there awesome all right so we got to address this social change bottom line okay um delaying life transitions okay we want people to work longer you know we're going to go into some examples where people don't have a whole lot of choice you know there's some tragedy out there where people don't have much in social security they don't have any form of retirement um, and it's a huge growing population, okay? And um, so, you know, what are we going to do, okay? We also have this, you know, family structure changing, okay? Um, we've talked about it before, okay? Um, and um, in our discussions, we, the concept of multi-generational housing, it's a reality, okay? Um, are you just... You know, as you get out there and you get a good job, and maybe your parents had some issues along the way, okay? Are you just going to kick them to the street, okay? Or are you going to open up your personal housing decisions? Um, you know, maybe buy a home uh, someday that has uh, a um, accessory living unit, okay? And uh, so they could be on the side of the house over there. And this is, you know, a lot of you guys are, are business real estate development. This is kind of uh, the future, okay? Awesome. So in this article right here, then we, we then look at a couple examples, okay? And um, so this was a 2019 uh, article from uh, National Public Radio, okay? And it just shows you a, a few examples of what's happening. So this guy's name is Bob Orozco. As we see right here, he's 89 years of age. He stays very active, reducing his likelihood of having disease, okay? He's uh, running... Um, uh, uh exercise classes okay teaches 11 of them um at a facility in hey my community looking at a gal okay um he doesn't get paid much okay but he's done quite well in life okay and this is just fulfilling for him okay so then they go over some of the stats here the stuff we talk about okay in class and um this is you know we're going to get into more of the shock and awe about retirement plans okay um, pensions have disappeared, except if you're, um, um, hey, my dogs are making a lot of us. Desi, come here, come here, come here. All right, cool. They like to wrestle over there. Um, so yeah, so, uh, um, so we see that, that a lot of people lost money in their 401ks. Okay. And we look at, um, a, a recent survey and 50% of Americans are, 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 you know, diving into their savings to pay for their children. Okay. And if we look at the median assets that people have um, that are in this retirement age group um, across our country, it's $150,000. Now, um, that's everything, okay? That's, you know, whatever type of IRA, investment, uh, investment investing retirement account, okay? They, they have a 401k, okay? Savings, um, um, uh, real estate, it's everything, you know? Um, we'll see that if we, we hone it down to actual, um, uh, um, you know, liquidity, all right, so that would be not your house, it's just some money you have access to, it says to 50% of the people over the age of 65 will be relying 100% on Social Security, which, um, as we'll see, is not a lot of money, okay? Maximum uh, is $44,000 right now, and not... And the likelihood of getting the maximum for Social Security is pretty low for most of America, okay? Alrighty, very cool. So that goes over Bob's situation right there, and uh, and he's living a, a good life. Okay. Then we have another person right here, um, Kylie Cohen. Okay. So she was a part-time um, person in uh, the entertainment industry. Okay. Um, so we heard about the writers' strike. Okay. So that she was part of that. Okay. And um, part of being that that community, the writers' community. Okay. Um, she's now you know relying on Social Security. And food stamps, okay, um, she, um, you know, was a single mother, okay, and, um, and you know, had a fairly difficult life. She's luckily, she's in 
um, uh, uh, she waited and waited and waited and got into this uh, Long Beach Senior Arts Colony, okay? It's housing for low-income, low older adults, and uh, it makes life easier, but it's not perfect. She, as she says right here, 75% of, of her Social Security is spent on rent, okay? All right? Leaving $245 for the rest of the month that she has to spend on food, cleaning supplies, okay? So if, if you do the math on this, okay, um, if... Uh, if uh, $245 a month is 25% of her income, she's only making uh, in her Social Security uh, just slightly below $1,000 a month. You know, so, you know, about $980. So, so $1,000 a month, $12,000 a year, that's just really rough. Why so little? Okay, because we'll see that your Social Security income is determined by um, your, your top income earning 35 years of work. Okay, if you don't work for a bunch of those years, then that's a big zero. Okay, and it's not, you know, it's not like you get this average amount. You you, you get what's called an indexed amount. Okay, this is her Brent, her buddy right here. Okay, Veronica Bryant. She's in the same story. Okay, so it's really difficult. It looks like a nice place that they live, so they're lucky. But uh, low income housing is really hard to come by. All right. Um, this is an example of somebody who's a success story, okay? So she's retired with purpose, you know? She's, she's really engaged, has a great life. She was a teacher. One of those rare commodities where she has an absolute guaranteed income called a pension, okay? My good friend, Willie Lou, just uh, stopped being a teacher for the Cerrito School District, you know? And, you know, his, his pension is somewhere uh, around 120 grand a year, you know? So that's great, you know. So if Willie lives another 30 years, he's got guaranteed income. Okay. Now, when he dies, okay, if there, um, you know, the difference between him and me, if I have a couple million in my 401k, when I die, what's left behind goes to my kids. Okay. With Willie, he has that guaranteed income. Okay, so he should put it aside. <laughs> um, um, but once he's gone, he dies. That income is gone. Okay. All right. Cool. 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 So. That's the story there, okay? All righty, so uh, it gives you a real feel, okay? Then we come down here, and we, in your discussion, we want you to consider um, the, the consequences of this economic reality, okay? Um, and, uh, you know, one right here is the stress, okay? So um, we talked a little bit about the kind of the endocrinology, the physiology of stress. And when you're stressed out, you release this hormone called cortisol. It helps you fight off... Um, you know, uh, a lion that's chasing you down the road, okay? But not you're not supposed to be tapping into it psychologically every day, and it begins to eat away at your body, okay? And they talk about here, one of the indexes is this little cap on the very tips of your chromosomes that protects you from having mutations and problems with your DNA. And we see in this, uh, in this particular uh, study that those caps disintegrated and people had... Uh, consequent physiological problems. Um, the other thing is uh, staying relevant, okay? And so, you know, we, we're seeing contraction in companies all around. That's impacting you guys. It's, it sucks, you know? Um, and um, so, uh, you know, uh, people are getting laid off. Back in the day, if you uh, got your degree in computer science, you could code, you know, you had a really good um, um, projection in terms of your profession and income. But, you know, artificial intelligence is creeping in. People are losing their jobs, okay? All right, so, so you have to stay um, current. You have to stay uh, competitive. And then this is a really, really amazing video you have to watch, okay? And it, it just talks about um, uh, the current day, okay? So it was, it was a recently done video. Um, and um, it talks uh, about uh, so many people are completely reliant on Social Security, how it's not enough. People are trying to have the most menial jobs, trying to get competitive and get those jobs, but they can't. And there's features of, of, of this um, kind of migrant community that have no homes, that live in RVs, in tents, um, that are older Americans called. And it was featured in this really great movie. You haven't seen it called Nomadland. So... All righty, guys, check that out, all right? Uh, good luck today, stay safe, and uh, we'll see you next time.